Buluvinaka. I thought I'd come on today to just share something that we do as parents in our family um, that might be useful to you that's working so far, you know, every season in this journey we kind of have to try different things as parents um, to help equip, I guess, or our children um, for, the, for life. Now, the reason why I want to share this now is because I have been seeing you all most of you will know that I've been in the space of um, uh, communities that are outside of what I'm familiar with, the sex workers community, um, which by extension is a big part of the gay community. Uh, we also have the communities that our volleyball teams are a part of, so I have learned so, so much, so much, and it's been a very, very humbling experience. But one thing I can say confidently is that a lot of the problems that we are seeing, the social issues, points back to the home. Um, there's a breakdown in our responsibilities as parents, how we are parenting. Uh, some parents are actually the perpetrators in rape, in violence, in trafficking. Um, but not only that, even if it is not something as serious as that, like how do we parent in this day and age? I was saying to one of the ladies yesterday, I was at a um, went to listen to my daughter, and I'll post about that separately. She was speaking, so, so proud of her. But I was saying to one of the older ladies there, it is so difficult to be a parent in this day and age. Um, we're trying to navigate ourselves as parents this technological age, but then having to guide your children through it, that's a whole other ball game. Now, when things like pornography, trafficking, um, you know, opportunities to go into the sex worker industry, which is something that the young people, there's so many young people in that industry. But when those things come up, we're expected as parents to talk about them with our kids. And they're not easy. I mean, we don't want to think that our kids even know about these kind of things, but they do. Kids under 10 are already watching uh, porn. So how do we bring this up? And a number of people have asked me how I do it. And trust me, I do not know everything. I make mistakes all, all the time. But I want to share with you something we do as a family because what I have learned and what I'm absolutely sure works is intentionally creating an environment from as early as you can, early as you can. If you've missed that, don't worry, it's never too late. But creating an environment where our children will be comfortable asking us questions or comfortable us talking about these awkward things. So, and side note here, I am sure my children are not always comfortable with talking about things with me or Edwin. But this is what we do. So as you know, we are a Christian family. We are all followers of Christ. The church, Jesus is our everything. Everything we do um, comes off our love for Christ, our love for the church, his will, what his plan for us is. So that guides us all the time. The biggest challenge is, I guess, bringing that to life in a practical way, not only in our lives, but for our children. I really believe that... Um, our role, Edwin and I, we operate this way, that our role is always to point our children to Jesus, um, is to encourage them to have their own relationship and equip them with as much knowledge as possible so they can make decisions for themselves. It isn't always easy. So what we do as a family is we meet together once a week, try. I tell you, we miss so many weeks sometimes. Um, but we have moved away from your traditional way of doing uh, devotion. I, I suppose you, we're brought up in Christian homes where it's a set time, right? And I don't know, we might sing a chorus, read a Bible verse. So I found that the kids, especially Gideon, was really um, just disengaged there eh? because he didn't see the relevance, I guess. He didn't find it interesting. So what we do now, we thought we'd try something different. We've tried a few things while at the same time keeping the word of God central because that's important. And this is working for us so far. So what we do is once a week, normally on Wednesdays, we would um, call it a family night. And so we'd sit around wherever you're comfortable in the living room, find your spot. And then we talk about our highlights and lowlights, all of us. Um, what is the best thing that happened? What are the things that really brought us down? Um, 
And so Edwin and I have learned over the years through church, um, through involving our children in um, Bible studies, connect groups we call them, we've learned to just allow them to really speak their heart even if it embarrasses us, embarrasses us or makes us angry. That has been a big learning curve for Edwin and I. Um, because when you have connect group, there's other people, right? And so you can imagine these two kids, the way they talk, they just kind of like, yeah, and this morning, one time Gideon said, this morning we were coming, not Gideon, Melanie, when she was younger, to church, and mom and dad had this huge fight, and this was like half the congregation in this conversation. Anyway, we were just smiling and then realized, you know, we have to let them, we have to give them the space and not reprimand them when they say things that might be embarrassing to us. So they go, we go through our highlights and our lowlights. And then the last part of that is, what did you learn about the Word of God? What, did, what came out in your devotion or maybe a church service that you used? Yeah, or that you used this week. And it has been fantastic because not only does um, it make sure that they are kind of remembering or really... Um, that, that they're listening and trying to digest their own devotion when they have it in the morning, but they know that Wednesday is going to come, and so they really try to find how they can make that word relevant. So in a way, it's also teaching them that the word of God is applicable in our everyday. That's a whole point. And so it might be, for example, Gideon might say, you know, I read about um, honoring others. And then when he then he says, and then I realize I didn't honor Melania, and I didn't do this. And so that has worked amazingly for us. Um, and it's also given Edwin and I an opportunity to pick up when things are not going so well. Um, we often are just, then we'll take it back, we'll pray about it, or if they come up with it there, we'll address it there. But that has worked so well for us this season. Um, and by setting a day, it also forces us because really every day is a bit ambitious for us, because uh, I we our schedules are really crazy. Melanie is doing online school. She has classes that are late, but we can commit to once a day. So I want to leave that with you. If it works, um, and don't force it, don't force it, um, but it's a, even if it's around the dinner table, but I guess the whole point is intentionality with the conversations, and let's start to create the environment, because, you know, seeing children missing, <laughs> on the news and all of this other horrible stuff. Let's do what's within our control and that is just loving on protecting our own families intentionally. Yes, I really hope that helps you guys the way it's helped us and I will speak to you all later.